into the online broadcast network. After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! <laughs> Hello, everyone. Sorry. What's up, guys? Uh, welcome to the American Classic American theme, American's pilot. After show. Little Fleetwood Mac. Oh, wow. Yeah. Way back. Uh, this is episode 11, <laughs> One Day in the Life of Anton Baklanoff. Uh, I am Adrian Snow. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Miss Adrian Snow. M S E D R I A N. S N O W. Almost spelled my name wrong. And what are you guys? Hey, uh, Matt Ritter. You can find me at Matt Ritter Comedy. Matt Ritter One on Twitter. Any comedy hellhole around L A. <laughs> Don't forget about Periscope. <laughs> and, and, and Periscope. Periscope. You can Good find catch. me uh, at Radio TFB on Twitter at joshrichman.net and not on Periscope for the foreseeable future. Yeah, Ooh, <laughs> he rejects Periscope. Right. I just, I don't need to be, I like being live streamed right now. I don't need to be live streamed all, all the, the time. time. You, know? you know you do. 1984. It is. My name is Ben Bateman. You can find me only on Periscope. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I canceled my Twitter. I canceled my Instagram, guys. I have one avenue. That's the only one. Look me up if you're interested. <laughs> Betting big on Periscope. <laughs> I'm all in, guys. Ashley Kutcher put in on that, too, I think. So the two of you guys, I think he's an investor. Yeah, we, we, we hang out. So, we, we stream it. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. All right. So what is everyone's first thoughts? See first it. thoughts? I think that <laughs> orgasm was real. What? I agree. No, I agree. I agree with you. I think Who the writers. Orgasm? I think the writers were like, bit? come when? on. No, <laughs> she or, she had that vein in her head? No? Yeah, they showed the know. vein. When did she orgasm? Will you tell us? I don't Would know. Would you like me to tell? Yeah, explain, explain the female orgasm Start to with you the birds and, and the bees works. and go all the way to the because hotel room scene. I can tell you. <laughs> she was probably, it seemed it was a very nice look of, oh, that feels nice. Okay. Oh, no, she was, she was, a, she was definitely she was enjoying, enjoying it. Yeah. I, my, my feeling yeah. was that they, they probably looked at this episode and they're like, man, this is a pretty boring episode. We're going to have to throw in some sex. Otherwise, this is not going to work. No. That's how I felt because I did not mm. like this episode very much. I <laughs> thought it was kind of a placeholder and, and you like episode six, episode seven, if you throw me a placeholder, I'm okay with it. Episode 11, you throw me a placeholder. The final three are supposed to be like just gangbusters and yeah. kind of well, interesting I thought we'll get into the sex stuff in a sec because I think there was some character beats to it I don't know if it was just to liven up a boring episode that said this didn't really this didn't quite have yeah like the strong character moments of the episode of Lois Smith or the big shocking reveals of last episode definitely a bit of a place over placeholder the interesting thing about the Americans though even at, for a subpar episode of the Americans which I agree this was there's a really there's a really high floor for this show Agreed. it rarely gets out and out bad and this was, I would say, a good episode. I still got enough notes. I mean, there were still yeah. things that I was like, this is cool, Frank Langella's a boss, et cetera, et cetera. I think, we all, I think we all came in here feeling slightly disappointed. Well, I, slightly. yeah, I think there, you know, sometimes towards the end of The Americans, like I mentioned, I think the very first episode that I struggled with the, the very last three episodes of The Americans, or the, the last two before the season finale. Right. Uh, just because they're tying up a lot of loose ends and sometimes it can get a bit slow because they've dropped a lot of bombs and now yeah. they have to kind of deal with the aftermath of that. Um, and they're leading up to like an even bigger bomb that will be dropped on the season finale. So sometimes the pacing, sometimes the editing can just be a little lackluster for my taste. On, on the flip side, I would say... Um... You know, the page storyline, which I think was what we wanted to kind of jump in with, I, I thought it was really amusing to see her basically be a really annoying child uh, finding out about <laughs> yeah. spy stuff. I know, you're kind of like, well, Are this we is there how yet? a kid Are would we react. There but yeah. why? Who Adrian why? is like, what is she not going to uh, Yes, child? thank you. <laughs> thank you. I wrote, I said, and annoying Paige is back. Yeah. She's back to being annoying. But it's more annoying because she's asking yes. spy questions. Oh, yeah. she's, guys, she's annoying with a rapier wit. She's uh, <laughs> sure. uh, a... <laughs> you have some kind weird, like... Uh, she's my favorite Paige, character. Right? But okay. <laughs> what, 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 I, what I will say is this. With the Paige stuff... Uh, the the one thing that I do really like is that it just sort of it changes like the anatomy of the whole like the whole show going forward that she knows mm -hmm. and it just all it does is sort of like trump cards every scene that she's in now because it's like it's kind of this before it was like this explosive is she gonna find out thing now it's like everything she says you're like is she gonna keep the secret because at any point in time 
she could just blow the roof off the door, so to speak. They're in an impossible situation right now. And the current the current situation right now, a sixteen year old girl who's just so she's not gonna stop asking questions. Right. It's, you know, it's like she's, she's she's searching for something. She's searching for an answer that she's never gonna get. She's got a big yeah. thing to hang over her parents and she's going to take full complete advantage of it. Well I will say, I mean they're they're being really honest with her. Like, you know, and, and that's that's nice for them to just really tell the truth. What's sad is that she just doesn't know what to believe. Like when she's in the car with Elizabeth, she's yeah. like, "How do I know?" Oh, that hurt. Me. That hurt me a little. Yeah, as a mom, that hurt me. But she's <laughs> right here. Okay, but she's right because Elizabeth is telling her the truth in that scene. Sure, but but she's also manipulating her still. Yeah. Because there's still this end game of trying to get Paige to join their cause, mm-hmm. and I think I think Paige can can kind of smell that out. Can kind of be like, I I know maybe 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 this is true, but maybe you're still just telling me this because you want me to do something. You know, they, both Philip and Elizabeth have been in, like, manipulating and playing mode for so long, for so much of their lives. It's mm-hmm. like they can't really shut that off. Well, here's a question. You find yourself in the situation that they're in, and you're looking at your daughter, and you know that she knows, and you kind of know at any point in time your life could just be ruined. Like, what happens if she, she rats you out to Beeman? You don't know it, and you're just cornered in your room, and all of a sudden cuffs her on. You're in jail forever. So you know that's a real possibility, that you could just be completely, you could just be betrayed. I mean... Is her well-being? I mean, you've been a manipulator and, a, and a, you know, a, a backstabber to the country you live in your entire life, basically. I assume that their daughter is the most important thing in the world, and then their children are. But at the same time, is she more important than them being in prison the rest of their life in America? What would you do? I mean, if you were if you were worried she was going to tell, what would you do? Would you just leave? I think this is what we're led to believe is the explosion of episode thirteen to come potentially that. You know, she's going to be the cause of them getting out at her and what, what to yeah. do about her. What to do. I mean, look, I don't think that they're capable of doing anything harmful to her. What would you do? I mean, I'd slit <laughs> her throat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, you. Dang, ah. not showing that darkness. <laughs> yeah. Lights out. I'd probably, you know, I'd, I'd like to think it'd be like the good parent and go to jail for my kid, for my kid's well-being. But I don't, I don't know. I think Philip and Elizabeth probably have very different answers to that question. Yeah, I, I think that it's not really going to come down to them. It's going to come down to what, um, what Russia wants to do. And yeah. If, and if they refuse to kill their own child, that doesn't mean they won't send someone else to do it. That doesn't mean they won't have Hans do it. You know. So it's not. I, I wouldn't think that they would go so far to kill a page that doesn't mean that no. somebody won't go so far to kill here's her. my other question your your russia i mean don't you have somebody else monitoring the situation now it's a little too you're a little too vulnerable with page walking around well I going mean, to school <laughs> having all these other interactions going forward maybe i mean she yeah she, you know. right now i'm saying when, wouldn't you expect them to have somebody else in there monitoring the situation that might be a maybe, reason maybe why we Hans. saw in the preview, they're just that glimpse of uh, what's yeah. her face. So there might be something in place. Because, you know, because it's like they're now, like, they're at the office or, or they're home and they're like, I don't know if she's going to go to, I don't, they don't know what she's doing right, right. now, which yeah. is a really bad situation Definitely. for them to be in and a worse situation for Russia to be in. Well, Gabriel kind of alluded to the possibility of, of them taking care of it in terms of him dealing with um, the center and him also. Once I feel once they made Gabriel aware, it was them also saying, you know, we need now have to watch her. We need help, and that Gabriel will do what is necessary, even if he doesn't make them aware of it. He will do what's necessary to ensure their safety, and possibly hers. Though I don't think he's he's as invested in Paige. I do want to say one more time. I just think Frank Langella is a total boss. Yeah, that guy's such a good actor. I just love I love like when they're waiting in the apartment and he walks in and they just say Paige knows and he just like pauses and puts his hat on the rack mm-hmm. and turns Good. back and just like the look on his face and like the calm with which he reacts and all that I think guy's just awesome effortless I, yeah. I, I just can't wait to periscope with Frank Langella I mean, that is really God when will that guy start a periscope when account is he gonna start I want to know a day in the life of Frank Langella Frank, forget on some Buckley he tries on some of his yeah. Nixon wigs and just stuff stop. I don't know don't do it <laughs> guys I know this is I, I'm just gonna 30 seconds I just want to ask because I know I only heard about this app, Periscope, like a week ago. Oh, God. No, I just want to know. I heard about it like a week ago, and I swear I swear to you, every day since the day I heard about it, I've heard like four or five times. So I'm wondering, when, like, did you guys all hear about it last week? South by Southwest, there was a huge explosion of these live streaming apps. There's yeah. Periscope and there's Meerkat. Meerkat was considered the front runner in right. this space. But what happened was Twitter shut down the functionality of being able to use your Twitter followers automatically on Meerkat. Aha. So therefore, they put their money in their own app, Geniuses. Periscope. So they're 
I don't know what's going to happen. And good luck, Meerkat. Interesting. Okay. Well, but there's always one. There was like Mobley when Instagram came right, out. Right, you know? right. Where are they now? Mm, exactly. Mm, That's interesting. They're in the MySpace you... boneyard. Yeah. But you know what to tie that into the Americans a bit. How funny to see uh, that that computer foregrounded when you go into the hotel manager's office, and it's like you know the hotel manager's named it Betsy, yeah, yeah. his mother, and it's They're like talking about IBM, and talking about IBM. It's like you know, kind of the the subtext there. This is the real revolution. Oh, you know, it's right. not the communist revolution. It's the computer revolution that it will is. actually change Speaking everything. Speaking of which, because I didn't mention it when we when we started the show, please. Uh, follow us on Instagram <laughs> Periscope, Periscope, Periscope. and Twitter. Uh, also, subscribe to our YouTube channel, SoundCloud, iTunes. We love to hear from you guys. We do read everything. We do res- um, respond sometimes to ourselves and sometimes to you. So we appreciate. Well, well that's true, right? At least yeah. I read it. I uh, have a response. Um, so we really appreciate hearing from you guys. And should these guys be on Periscope because I will not be follow them and yeah. enjoy their live streams enjoy yeah. enjoy the revolution crazy. all the fascinating things they're undoubtedly doing all day yes. I just did my first one like 20 minutes ago yeah. so if you guys shall, sh- shall we get back to, to the page yes, I yeah. sure. Sure. to get back to that now that we've oh my gosh um, something I actually liked about that initial scene mm-hmm. with Paige is when she's coming out and asking them all these questions a couple of t- a little bit it's like fan questions about how this si- this situation of Philip yeah. and Elizabeth really works like when she's like so what's up with the travel agency are all those guys spies that's something I've wondered about the entire duration of this right. show and they right. didn't answer they, no like, they did answer oh. they were like oh those those guys no they're not spies they're just oh, a normal they travel agency oh, okay, yeah. they did because it was it was all going really fast of but... course that just a- raises further questions like what are they do these guys run the travel agency philip and elizabeth so what do they think about their bosses who are never there and don't seem all that invested well, in travel when are bosses <laughs> ever there like let's right. be real right. you know unless you are middle management even then when are you really there i was a manager i tried to escape <laughs> as much as possible I, I, i'm curious how you guys really. felt about the other scene where she asked if she could go see her mother mm. and she told her no Paige's reaction yeah what did you make of that uh i didn't really know what to make of it um i didn't necessarily understand Paige's response mm-hmm. so i couldn't tell if she was just like frustrated or you know sad i don't know i, I, I interpreted it a little as Oh, I kind of feel bad for my mom, and then wait, I shouldn't feel bad for my mom. This this woman has been lying to me my entire mm-hmm. life. Yeah, and I'm just gonna leave. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of gather that she she heard and she was like she thought for a second and she was like, "Yep, the the reality is setting in. Yeah. I have a grandma. I can't see her. Oh, my yeah. mom can't see her. That's not a thing that can ever happen. And it's not even like oh we'll talk about it. It was can you go see her? No. Right. It's like I have a grandmother. Right. Too. It's like I have it's a her, grandmother. Her own oh, relationship. Yeah. She'll it's, never be able to get to it's see. Like somebody telling you have a long lost kid, and can I ever meet him? Yeah. No, it's impossible. I, every day she's gonna have new sad things dawn on her. Yeah. Which, I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah. Me Man, mm-hmm. Holly Taylor though really is playing this great. She's like you can tell like she's barely keeping it together. Like, yeah, which is which is how this probably would weigh yeah. on you. She's just... she's close to being like Henry past the potatoes. We're all spies. Yeah, right, right. right. Well, she's great. Just... She's the best character on the show. Yeah. Like it's not just it's not just the big uh... reveal of last. <laughs> it's not just the big reveal of last episode. Yeah. It's this cascading series of revelations that's like never gonna stop. It's building, <laughs> and you know, and that's what I think this kind of episode served is just to like show how it's building and and where it's gonna eventually lead. Um, so you see, like everything kind of getting to that point where. It's starting to get to the boiling point, but it's not quite there yet. Right. Um, did anyone have anything else to say about about Paige? I mean, I would just the, the, I would connect it to basically like because we already talked about Gabriel a little bit and that whole mm-hmm. thing. I would connect it to the Philip and Gabriel stuff, which is related to the yeah, whole thing. We can go back to that. Yeah, and I would just say like I feel like that we've talked about this for a while now. The whole the whole if you come near my family, I'll kill you vibe mm-hmm. that we got from him, mm-hmm. and uh, it was interesting the conversation they had on the bench, right? Mm-hmm. Where, like where he says to him. Um, are you, you know, are you falling apart? And he's like, no, but I'm sick and tired of hearing no from you. I'm going to need a yes. You just yeah, wonder. Smaller. Yeah, like I've, I've been, because it's like sort of boiling over that interaction. Well, I've the been, page safety issue may be the yes that they're going to need. You know, I mean, yeah. if anything happens, if she if she does something stupid, I don't know. You know what I mean? And maybe they need to bail her out or get her, you know, I don't really know what the yes is uh, going to be. I don't know what that yes is going to be. They're too calculated to just like shoot Gabriel because that's not yeah. going to solve right. anything. I believe it has been. As somebody mentioned in the past, that there there is a possibility that Elizabeth will go see her mom, so he might give in to that. He yeah. might give in to that to stop some from 
you know, having to say yes to something else. Yeah, well, Philip said that this episode, I've got a plan for you to see your mom. We just never, we hear, just never got to hear it. Yeah, I just yeah. never got to hear it. So Maybe a little page, Elizabeth, I wonder what, road trip. I wonder what that would be. be. I wonder if that's weird. maybe even related to like maybe like uh, they're gonna like smuggle back with the Mujahideen when they go back to Afghanistan or something. I don't even maybe. know, but some uh, something's gonna come into play. Um, on that note, did you, did you have anything else to mention? Philip oh, well, Gabriel? you just mentioned Philip Gabriel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is Philip falling apart? He's been keeping it together all year. It on, seems like, like it, but, teetering on but the it's edge. Like, but it's like a lot of stuff has been, and it's he seemed increasingly uncomfortable with like everything he's being asked to do. Right, he's more and more agitated. Well, it seems like they're both becoming increasingly uncomfortable with everything they have to do. You know, it, I, I would imagine twenty years as a spy yeah. can be exhausting. And I'm sure that's what Gabriel's thinking too. Change. He's like. You know, it's almost like you've served a good run as a spy. Maybe you're just nearing the end of your natural lifespan as a spy, and that's when the KGB takes you out back and shoots you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I like that they, oh, no. he made reference to in the conversation. He says, earlier this year, I developed an agent for three years, and then I killed her and broke her bones and put her in a suitcase. Uh-huh. Because it's one of those yeah. nice moments where you're like, as a viewer, obviously there was some shock factor to that. You were trying to get that from us. And, and it was achieved. It was an amazing scene, right? But then it's also like, that was a real thing he had to do that was important enough to reference in a later conversation. Yeah. It wasn't just a plot device. That was a big moment for him as a character yeah. too, right? I, I did like that he said that too. It's like, let's not sweep these things under the rug like I'm just you know, going yeah. out and doing a household chore for yeah. you. I mean, these are my humanity is at stake every time I do one of these acts. I lose a piece of myself. Totally. Yeah, it really does. I mean, and just even that moment, and we'll get to it, but the moment between him and Martha when he's teaching her how to lie, there was a Mm -hmm. moment where I just felt that, you know, he saw Martha and and he saw her in that like, you know, I see you type Mm -hmm. of way, Mm -hmm. and um, and. At one moment, like, felt maybe love and then empathy and then pity for mm-hmm. this woman, you know, mm-hmm. for all that she's had to go through because of his BS, mm-hmm. you yeah. know? So. Yeah. Kind of like Paige, Martha is also not just a single revelation, but kind yeah. of a continuing series of realizing who Clark really is. Yeah. And here it was realizing, man, Clark is like a master liar. The theme this of is lying throughout yeah. this episode. Yeah. Lying and trust were, always, I mean, they're always issues, but in this episode particularly, I think with the lying, yeah. teaching, you know, Martha was basically like his daughter in that scene, yeah. essentially. You know, it was like a, page you know the, the parallel scenes that they love to do in the americans is you know them sort of showing page the ropes him showing martha the ropes right it, it is it is a lot about you know in, in their profession and in their life just like what is trust and how uh, when do you know that you're dealing with actual truth and when you're dealing with a lie um and just how that affects you over time like having to constantly being being able to toe the line between the two uh, just as your everyday way of life yeah you know? I, I don't, and i don't even think elizabeth responded to Paige's question like how do i know mm-hmm. if because there isn't a there good isn't. answer there yeah. is no answer you yeah. can't you can't you can't know uh, no. it's like the it's like neither philip or elizabeth can be really normal people even when they try to be with anybody anymore except for mm-hmm. themselves and actually and actually one of the nicest things about this episode is realizing that they're now kind of closer than ever having to deal with all this stuff and everything between them seemed so sweet i did think it was a bit odd with uh with them at the end with their their sex scene it was really weird it, just his response the to melancholy it. blowjob if you will uh, yeah. I, I just didn't understand <laughs> album, like a smashing <laughs> pumpkins album in the 90s i, I didn't understand that reaction i feel like and I guess maybe he, to a certain extent, felt that she was using him. And it kind of got, I kind of got the feeling that she was. That she just needed to have that intimacy in that yeah. moment. Not, because sometimes, you know, uh, am I going to get in trouble? Whatever, who cares? Sometimes sex is just sex. Yeah. And mm-hmm. when sex is just sex, it's kind of boring. I mean, it feels nice, right. but it doesn't give you anything, um, really, in my opinion. Yeah. But when you have that intimacy with someone where there's that trust there and that comfort that they're not going to, um, you know, betray you in any way, I think that means a lot. And I think she just kind of wanted to feel that and he kind of knew that, 
But it's also still like he's being used. I think well, she was just still horny from the hotel. No, she yeah, he, he realized off, he realized know, she wasn't really getting the blowjob. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and maybe that's what the maybe that's maybe. what the expression but was. The, I, I think know, she was called just, him Neil or whatever that guy's name was. Yeah. It was I, just interesting, like especially her whole interaction with him that last time where she pushed him away and yeah, I don't know. I definitely got the sense that this episode in particular was very focused on the nature, of the, the changing nature of the relationships in the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, every one of them sort of has this shifting narrative, this weird shifting narrative. Like if you look at like Paige to her parents, like you're seeing a new kind of interaction there. You look mm-hmm. at like Martha and the way that she interacts with Clark, right? Like teaching her to lie, such, yeah. a, such a weird interaction, such a strange mm-hmm. kind of intimacy. Uh, you know, you look at like even like Elizabeth and Philip, like that interaction is so so strange that like i'm using you for sex you're not really my husband she's obviously having her reservations sort of about does you know what i mean you yeah. got that i definitely got the sense that they're and anton and nina oh, totally. as well there there mm-hmm. it's shifting there's a trust uh, thing I she mean, seems I, to fall in yeah, love with every right. guy no but i actually felt she like this doesn't. was the, no, no i felt like this not. I, I, totally no, but I, I felt like <laughs> there was a connection that you know again i i'm always of the of the mind that even if you are manipulating somebody that doesn't mean that the connection isn't necessarily sure real. right because mm-hmm. obviously i think clark and martha have a serious bond if anything, whatever you i think call it. i think in real life people manipulate people they really love and want to connect with all the time you know manipulating them like be yeah. a bigger part of my life there's different types of manipulation i mean there's like the manipulation you pull on your parents when you really want to talk mm-hmm. you know there's the manipulation you pull on your lover when you want them to do something that they are hesitant to do and there's the manipulation you pull on people that you just absolutely hate and kind of want to destroy mm-hmm. right so th- th- <laughs> there are just <laughs> different forms of manipulation you know it's not just like one easy way to go about it yeah, yeah. right I, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry master problems. manipulators on this panel S- side note uh, I love the USFL reference now I, I don't know if this is just like as a sports nerd maybe you know you got oh, it oh you guys get I'm it I'm a big yeah, USFL I, I, I was, got it because uh, I was like USFL yeah, it was, I actually thought there was probably a significance to that potentially there was that's the that's the year right because like so it's like Steve Young and a couple yeah. of those other guys Jim went Kelly, to USFL Herschel Walker Herschel Walker for Reggie just a couple White. years there and then the the league folded like three years after it's it, sort of what you think a parallel to sort of the communist cold war it was right? cool that they were yeah yeah exactly hmm. I, I think they were basically saying you know the, the, like america is the nfl right <laughs> and the usfl is russia on their way out folding you know they're yeah. trying to trying to make their best america. attempt yeah america uh, i didn't get that i did get the hundred thousand dollar bar <laughs> yeah right <laughs> yeah. oh the payday yes. versus the uh yeah. hundred thousand dollar the vending machine not working yes hundred grand it's awesome <laughs> all the mundane stuff they have to read through uh to, to go and just touch on anton and nina for a second because that's where we were kind of focusing on um i thought it was i don't th- I would love to believe that that Anton might be the guy that that breaks Nina's like hardcore mm-hmm. fight to get out of here, but she's a fighter. She's, she's a survivor a fighter. Like and a survivor. Said, yeah. No. And how, I mean, how can people keep falling for her thing over and over she's again? Sexy. She's, she's, she's no, so it's not sexy. It's not sexy <laughs> because she I think is. That, she's well, so sexy. Relief. Ritter loves really Nina. Yeah. I know. Stop. Yeah. Springtime. Right. We're Cheer dogs, down. okay? Just Cheer let down. us do our. Yeah. Let us bark at the moon. Everybody Adrian. who watches this show, <laughs> she's like, I'm getting off this sexy. panel right now. No. But I but mean, the, but the sex appeal no. angle doesn't work on Bachlano. That's what I, yeah. No. That's yeah. what I was going to say. So trust he thing. he admits to you know being relieved that she was different. Yes. From the rest of the women. Well, that he they slept with a bunch of two. Yeah, he slept with a bunch of women, and you know, and just that whole idea of like you get tired of waking up with a stranger in your bed that they sent for you. Uh, so he's more relieved to ha- find someone that he can connect with in that way, where yeah. he can be vulnerable. He can talk about how he misses his family, who understands his life in America. That's what what draws him in, and that's what Nina is good at. Yes, she's connecting. good at becoming whatever you need her to be. So if you need her to be like 
just something for sex, she can be that. If you need her to be a, a shoulder to cry on, she can be that. If you need her to be a fellow wounded victim, she can be that. She's for a you. good spy. And she's that, that makes her an excellent spy. She's probably yeah. a better spy. Yeah, she's than pretty. Elizabeth she's a before. pretty. Well, I don't know about well, that. Know. She's, <laughs> she's pretty, She gets caught. And she, she is in she's Russian prison. definitely in a Russian prison, but, but she's pretty good at it. I and think. she's also just, somebody yeah. who's she's good at using a little bit of the truth to help connect with people. Yeah, like what she mentioned being kind exactly. of how she feels like she's passed around so by the KGB basically from one yeah. place to another. She totally is. It doesn't mean she's not still secretly spying for them. But. She's also, I mean, it is it is really interesting. She she has that, that tendency to like, uh, one, she like next levels the information by using a piece of information that like with the letter she read. Yeah. yeah. She uses a piece of information where it's like, yeah, I did go through your stuff. I did read your letter but I haven't told anybody. I don't know why. Yeah. It's like, I have a piece of information on you. You should be reactive that I know it, mm -hmm. but I'm going to hold it close to the vest so you'll trust me. Yeah, yeah she, she's really good at like turning that, the, that information to use it so that they don't distrust her for being distrustful. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's like the scene yeah. in Shawshank Redemption when they're on the roof and he's like, he's like, do you trust your wife? And he's about to throw him off the yeah. roof. And he's like, if you trust your wife, I can save you money and your taxes. Yeah, he's yeah, like, well, totally. now I trust you. You know what I mean? It's the Nina same sort of thing. does have a lot of tactics yeah. up her sleeve. She definitely does. So I, I'm curious to see how she's going to play it out with Anton, you know. How she's going to throw him to the wall. I hope it's not just replaying the same sequence of you know that we saw already with, with the, the Belgian lady. Yeah, I hope I I I want to think Anton's smarter than that. I think maybe he he's too. not though. I yeah. think he is. For I don't some think reason. he is. No. I mean, okay, anyone who ends up back in Russia when they escaped. I'm sorry, you're just you're not that you're good. Probably going to fall. For you the mean same. the Soviet yeah. Union? Soviet Union, yes. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I, I feel bad for Anton, but he, he admits to trusting the wrong people who yeah. turned on him and, and sold him to the, the Russians, Soviet Union. So on that note, did you guys want to jump into, you have any of the final thoughts on Anton? No. Um, Wunderbar. So uh, <laughs> we kind of touched on the hotel a little bit. Um, I mean, I think the Martha interview stuff with yeah, Taffet. Yeah, I did have a question, though, before we jump into the Taffet and Martha and a little bit of Yusuf. Uh, did anyone, could anyone recall why uh, Elizabeth was struggling or seemed to have some issue with being sexual? Can I say, before you answer that, I thought it was interesting for them to, to bring back the sex, because I think I commented like an episode or it two It was kind of gone, ago, right? It was just like gone. It was. Uh, they no, they'd and, been like very deliberately. Yeah. I don't, re I don't remember what the inciting incident was, but like Philip had been very deliberately like trying to keep Elizabeth away from doing that kind of work, yeah. and I think she'd been happy to avoid it too. Here she's giving into it a bit more, and what I think was a le legitimately pretty hot sex scene for this show. But then yeah, there was, was definitely... that moment in the car when she came home and it looked like she was just going to start bawling, and I was like, well, I for the life of me cannot remember why that's been her reaction as of late. Like what. Was the inciting incident? No, in this case, I, I think mean, it was I'm like sure a, it's just like a I just life. had my hair blown back. Look, you didn't think so? I thought it was. I thought it was. A little, I thought it was a little bit of a like. Oh. I just experienced something more real than I was expecting, and this was the most real thing physically I've experienced in a long Maybe. time with a man. And now I'm walking back into this room with this like corpse of a relationship because you didn't get the sense this whole episode. She kept looking at Philip like. I would leave. I would leave this man, and if I could, but I can't. There's no oh, option. I don't know for that. if I. I don't no, know if I, I would go that far. at all. Yeah. I got several moments like that. I don't know. I guess I read it a little differently. It didn't seem. She seemed kind of just torn, but I, I couldn't read where that was coming from. I couldn't read. I had a really hard, difficult time reading like what she was feeling during those. I really. Sex scenes. I really honestly think it's just. Both Philip and Elizabeth have gone through something fairly traumatic, and yeah. it, she needed a release, and yeah, she got a release. That's what I was saying. She, I think so she got a release. She was in, this, in that moment. She was doing more than just like manipulating him for secrets. She actually like needed needed the sexual release. Maybe I almost thought she was going to do him again in the office. Yeah, she was. Yeah, it looked close like it was to it, close yeah. for sure. I think she I, was deliberating, like you know, like that. Uh, uh, this one's for me. I thought she was going to be like, uh, I'm going to do this one for me, and then she decided to go home. Well, I hope they touch you know? on that. I hope yeah. they kind of address that because I get I I just was viewing it differently I didn't quite understand like where that was all coming from and I could see she was conflicted in some way but I don't know I, I didn't know where that conflict stood 
for a second, I didn't, apparently the only person who saw this, but I thought maybe there was there was some sort of like small weapon strapped to her leg that she was like trying to cover yeah, up. Yeah, right. It looked like it there was, was a reach just, going. And it, yeah, it's just a guard belt. Maybe she knows but to I, put away the little the little twenty two. For, for a second, I thought, for a second, I thought she was getting ready to straight up like end of Gone Girl him and just uh, like you know I, blood everywhere. Uh, I didn't see that. <laughs> yeah, nice. Uh, that movie. Can we? Uh, n- not that I don't know what's on our list of things to talk about, but can we talk about where you know sort of the historical stuff is going to play out now? I mean, they were talking about the Mujahideen fighters. Yeah. The top. Well, 10. so yeah, it's a touch on you, y- Seth. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think. I don't, you know, I don't know if what that was alluding to. If there's going to be, you know, sort of some sort of big operation. Sure. Gonna, I, I, I thought, think because historically that was sort of around the time where a lot of big operations were happening, and we were really more heavily arming these guys with like these stinger weapons that could destroy the Russian helicopter and really turned turn things for sure. that war, mm-hmm. which is ultimately what's I, I think what we're heading. Maybe not next season, but you know, ultimately at some point, the Americans, the show, I think, is trying to. You know, meet up with the, some sort of crumbling of. Well, right now they're sure. in eighty two. Eighty three. Eighty right? three. Like they're in eighty three. Yeah. Right. Well, because he had a, a, a bootleg copy of Tron, which came out yeah. in eighty two, yeah. and then they used a song that was also from eighty two. Yeah, we moved into eighty three. Yeah, I think like we only. So, I think we only very recently got into eighty three. Like two episodes ago, that we were still in. Yeah, well, you could still we, have a bootleg movie from eighty two when yeah. you're in eighty three. True. Yeah. I mean, no, it was just the references that were kept coming up, right. or even the fact that they saw Tootsie in the theaters. Tootsie was released in 1982. Yeah. Right. Verdict was 82. Yeah. So that's why I keep thinking yeah. that there's. I think we, in for some reason the last week we get we saw something I from think 83, so. and USFL was maybe still launched in 82. It is but, snowing, so maybe. Yeah. It is, but yeah, but interesting hearing uh, Yusuf talking about the CIA's new weapon technology that can take down helicopters. Yeah, that, that, talking that, about that, it, pretty sure surface to air missiles. Yeah, they, they, they yeah. called them stingers. Yeah, and, and those oh, were really interesting. Like a big. Those were really a big. That was the name of the last episode. That was a big... Oh, wait, is that right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's the title of the last episode? The yeah. name of the last episode was Stingers, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, th- there's got to be some connection because the Stinger yeah. weapons were really... Uh, a big game changer for you know. I mean, these guys. Wasn't on that the kind of what Yusuf wants? Well, he wants. Isn't that kind of what he wants? Pictures of. Of the yeah, that's what exactly. yeah. so he's asking for. Yeah. The stingers. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. That's so interesting. you know, I'm just wondering if they're that they're at the end of the season. If there's going to be a shift, you know, in the global sure. war going on right now. Entirely possible. Yeah. I mean, they do a really good job of always kind of, even though we are dealing with the fiction. There's always. You know, they always reference what is going on around them so that you really understand, like, where these people are at in the, the time that they live in and what they're doing for their country uh, actively and how it affects um, Certainly, yeah. affects them. I looked it up, too. I, I don't know if that was just a, a coincidence or if they were doing it as an homage to the actual um, Mujahideen fighters and whatnot, mm-hmm. but their leader was named Yusuf. Mm. Actually. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. During the, one of the top I, guys over there. <laughs> yeah, I hate Yusuf. <laughs> no, I, what did that, he say about Annalisa? That what just really pissed what, me what, off. How did he freeze? He that? says, "I loved her. I was ready to change my life for her." I As think. you strangled her, I, that was and really. Yeah. Had sex was he with saying her? that to get under Phillips? Like, what no, was the, he meant it he genuinely, meant which is it? why I hate you. What, like, what a psycho! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. What a psycho. Yeah. Welcome to a show about people who kill no, each other and bring their bodies so in the suitcases. Do what you I do. mean, just for him to be like, yeah, I really like that girl. Which one? Oh, the one, you know, that one that I choked to death with my bare hands. Right. Yeah, that, I was really digging her. Excellent. <laughs> the one whose bones I helped break and shove into a suitcase. Yeah. I loved like, her whoa. so much. But was that just to show that he's a psycho? Or was that, I mean, no, yeah. I hate, but the thing is, is that he's said stuff like that before yeah. and he, he's meant it. He's just. No, but I think was that before or after Gabriel and Philip? Because I think maybe that triggered that was before, right? So I think that triggered yeah, Philip. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that really triggered walking her. alongside her. her yeah, murderer. because you block this stuff out, you know. And that also made me have the realization. Um, well, we haven't gotten to Walter Taffy yet, so let's just yeah. wrap up with yeah. Yusuf. But uh, so I'll have to come back to that that, that thought. But yeah, Yusuf is just. Uh, I think, at least with with his whole dialogue, that made me realize what the hotel was for. Mm-hmm. That they, okay, they're they're getting this hotel so they can grab this this agent from the Afghan group, and I finally appreciate that. But I'm kind of tired of Yusuf. I want him to be done because yeah. he just pisses me off, Spe- and they should just kill him and break his bones. Speaking of people soon to be done, we aren't going to talk about this because I don't think we have time. But uh, Lisa and Maurice, yeah, uh, the whole, yeah. I was wondering about this too. The what? whole like let's get it, like let us in on the action, your fake action, basically that is yeah. like you're a, not a real person that's selling us this whole plot. So like. 
they're gonna die pretty clearly, right? That's the that's I think he's the gonna only, die. Yeah, yeah it sure seems die. like she may live. Yeah, it sure seems like I, Maurice yeah. knows a lot more than he should. I, one, I don't think Elizabeth likes Maurice at all. She doesn't no, like to no, be no, no. The fact that he said that you're the head of the operation probably pissed her off, mm-hmm. and and the fact that he, I mean, this is what they wanted to happen, and so I'm sure she's grateful that it is happening. Right. But I, I'm sh- sure she's also upset that it's happening on his terms and not Lisa's terms. Right. So, he's like, we want double. It's like yeah. you're gonna die. <laughs> right. So I'm sure it's like whatever needs needs to change hands will change hands, and then and then Maurice, Maurice gets taken care of. Yep. Yeah. 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 But that'll unfold more. Let's let's talk uh, with. Martha yeah. yeah, we got to talk Taffet. Walter Taffet a little bit, who is just a, a very interesting, just kind of enigma of a character. You yeah. don't know what the hell he's. He's thinking. a good character. He's right? a great character. He's a very yeah. good character. I like that that uh, what, what's his name called him a computer. Yeah, like a human G. computer. Mm-hmm. The human computer. You know, that it was like, you know, so it was so fascinating. Computers were just so. Yeah. fascinating to everybody in this whole episode too they're still fascinating yeah, yeah. my dad, my so dad actually started a software company in 79 so i relate to all of these mm-hmm. antiquated computers we had them all over our house just garage filled with those oh, kinds of the like boxes yeah. the huge like the one in the hotel the room, giant just box. giant ones right. yeah black and green oh, but then God. but then what do you think about how things played out between him and martha is it just did he did he miss the obvious truth or is he playing some sort of longer game with her? I think he's playing the long game. That's I think what, he's playing a long game. Or is he just good at making waiting. everybody think he's playing the long game when he actually has well, no Well, she's clue. still the obvious target regardless of that yeah. short convo. I right. mean, that wouldn't change any... I mean, obviously, if she gave herself away, it would, but just her playing it straight, that doesn't... You know, I mean, he, it was it was too short. And he's aware of minutes. something with her right. relationship. Well, we also got no um, follow-up to Beeman being suspicious of Martha, which ended the last episode. Yeah. So it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. It's possible that Beeman has said something. It's you know, you don't know because he asked where Martha was. So like, you just don't know if Taffet knows more than he's letting on. Um, I still think we're building towards. Well, anyway, we'll oh, you got to see Agent Gad for a split second in this new high tech uh, yeah. office. Whoever, yeah. whoever on the Americans thought of that idea just visually, uh, you know, the way they shot the nose thing that cracked me up. Yeah, oh, yeah. That, that was, was really great. perfect that was shot. Really... Yeah, great shot. Just her staring at his nose. Uh, the one thing I did want to touch on was just uh, just going back to the whole idea of trust. You know, how much Martha trusts Clark, and Clark is the man who killed Agent Amador, who was. Martha's lover. Right. And so it, it was just kind of like, as she was talking about how, you know, she was heartbroken or, or hurt when Amador died, I was like, oh crap, your husband. Your I know. Husband did it. Oh, and right. then, and yeah. then when, when Taffet says, do you have any idea what might have happened to Amador? Do you think maybe she, that triggered something? Like maybe Clark was partly responsible? Or, well, I or think, is that I, a well, huge I think that was, no, I think you're, it's like, is that leading her down that path? Right. Uh oh. Right. You know, uh-oh, this guy killed. And I, I don't see how it can't, you know. It, it's just, there was a reason why they brought that up, you know, because the show is really smart. And to, to bring that back up and the fact that he died and then how conveniently Clark appeared in her life around the same time, it, right. it's just kind of like... So hmm. that's what's going on. And even if this wasn't the most interesting episode on the whole, everybody's, this is what's happening. Everybody's putting the pieces together. Everybody's suddenly yeah. getting a clearer picture of the, of the grander puzzle and it's all just kind of collapsing yeah. into one. You know what I think this was? If you ever do jigsaw puzzles, it's like when you finally get all the border. Yes. Right, right, right. That's what this episode was. Like, now I kind of know what this looks like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you're looking at the box. You're like, oh, okay, yeah. the fish so, are over here. The, the shark yeah. is over here. The whale, and this is just blue stuff. This is just yeah, they're wrapping up. Uh, they're wrapping it up, which is really nice to see. Did anyone have any final thoughts on on Martha? No. Well, I have a prediction, but we can. But yeah, say so that. I was about to say. So let's go ahead into predictions then. Excellent. And now you're after Buzz TV predictions. Okay, would anyone so, like to start? I'll start, I'll start. <laughs> By the way, I apologize to uh, Pastor Tim, because I, I, I said off, <laughs> yeah. and, then he, and then he hit us up, on Kelly hit us up on Twitter, and said, how dare you? And I said, I've predicted everybody's death on the show, but now I think I may be stealing your thunder here. You just made me hit on, Martha's going to somehow find out how uh, Amador died and confront Clark about it. Could, very well could And that happen. gun is going to reveal itself in mm. some way. Well, man, things are about to get really... I mean, just the fact that we know that uh, Gabriel's meeting up with Claudia, neither Philip or Elizabeth that could be very happy about that. Yeah. Um, things are about to get tense for these two. And I just know I know that Philip's got a plan for getting Elizabeth out of the country. 
Maybe that plan involves even smuggling the entire family out of the country. Mm. Maybe they're just done in America entirely. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to sort of piggyback onto that idea <laughs> with, uh, you know, I've talked about in previous predictions that I thought maybe there was going to be some sort of exile. There was going to be some sort of uh, one of them or both of them having to go away. And I definitely think the lead in with I have an idea to get you out of the country and all that stuff is that is what's coming. Um, probably in the finale, I would I would say mm-hmm. that. I think and, so too. And Martha's eventual death. I think the two of those are oh, still no. still coming. Love Allison Wright. She's great, but I think she's gonna die. Well, I still kind of believe that. Yeah, that, you know, it was gonna be them on the run with the whole idea of of Elizabeth going to Russia. I think the moment she goes to Russia is the moment that Paige might turn on her parents. Mm-hmm. And so, right, uh, that could happen too. I. I I get the feeling that the season will be left on a cliffhanger, and so it'll be with maybe with Elizabeth trapped in Russia, not able to get back, and Philip having that to deal with that. That would be interesting. Neither seasons one or two have ended on a cliffhanger yeah. so far. It's kind of just wrapped up all the action. And they know that they're getting package. a season four. But also, yeah. somebody's got to die. Yeah, yeah right. somebody has to die. You can't somebody just keep giving die. us. You can't keep giving us like irrelevant to, like no, characters no. that show up. It was up. like remember Beverly Hills 90210, and it was just David Silver's friend, the blonde kid who died. I don't you know just if you guys aged remember. yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, we thought it was gonna. Oh my god! Wait, you mean Kelly that, you that show on the CW? Yeah, that, that, uh, uh, the so great, sorry, the great sorry, original man. one, the original Peach Pit. <laughs> David Silver's friend shot himself with a gun. It was a gun like awareness prevention. Oh, show, like, you gotta episode. love the 90s Back when, that. back when every show had like a lesson built in. Lesson, into, yeah. so alcoholism, Nancy like Reagan drugs. Came on and she's yeah. like, be careful with guns. I'm so scared. Yeah. Yeah. Love, love those '90s shows. Oh, yeah. Don't do drugs. Mm. I'm excited about these last two yeah. episodes. Yeah, it's gonna really get good. excited. It's gonna get good. This, this was at. at at, at the very worst, this was a setup episode for the next two and a half hours of Americans, which is going to be awesome. For sure. Yeah. The finale is extra long. Two and, a, two and a half episodes? Really? Well, no, I'm sorry. I was, I was thinking of Walking the, Dead was an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. I feel oh, like the geez. finale is longer than oh, nice. normal episodes. Maybe we'll get another five maybe. minutes. Yeah, maybe another five minutes. Yeah. On that note, we should probably wrap it up, y'all. So yes. where can everyone find everyone? Uh, you can find me right after this show at the Improv Eating Chicken Wings, or you can <laughs> check out my website, Matt Ritter Comedy, uh, Matt Ritter One on Twitter. Or you can find him on Periscope. Right? Oh, just, just, Periscope. Right now. I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm on Twitter, Radio TFB. I'm online at joshrichman.net, and maybe I'm just going to make like a homemade Periscope out of one of those toilet oh, paper God. rolls. Oh, that I used make to... real Periscopes. Yeah, real Periscopes. Uh, and two Bateman. beers. Ben Bateman Media, Twitter, Instagram, and if it sticks around, probably Periscope. Uh, Adrian Snow. Uh, sorry, no, I'm Adrian Snow. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Miss Adrian Snow. Look not on Periscope. Periscope. Yeah, yeah. I see oh, On that th- note, thank you so much for tuning in to the Americans <laughs> After Show. Uh, it's been great. Oh Ignore them. Uh, and we will see you Whoa. next Wednesday. Whoa. Bye, guys. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 